Ну что? What are you doing? Huh? <clears throat> Doing a legit pour over because <clears throat> I believe that it does Make it a little smoother. What's up? Sam, how's it going? Yeah, I'm touching you. I'm touching you, Sam. What are we gonna do about those balls? Huh, Sam? I hate to do it to you as like a fellow owner of balls, but uh, it's probably going to happen. Definitely going to happen. I don't know about the... Um, the gooseneck kettle business. So I don't do this that often. Sam! Yeah, I know they pop. I know they pour better. Well, you do get this sort of problem with this, you know? Like, I understand the practical business. Because see what happens there, the drip. I get it. See what happens when you love somebody, when you love something and the people that make this something see that you like it. This is the blessing. This is the, of being a sort of small time influencer is I get some Zevia. Dude, dude, dude. Actually, the sooner Sammy gets neutered, the better is not what my vet told me. Hey, buddy. I was told by my vet, and maybe I, should I listen to my vet or this random person on my feed? I was told by my vet that six months. I'm definitely a small time influencer because I don't do it on purpose. I rarely do the influencing on purpose. But if somebody sends me something I like, like I'm not getting paid for it. Well, we get paid to do ads on the podcast, but if I'm not, I'm not getting paid for it, I, you know, I don't have to do anything and I don't seek money for doing the influence racket. But, um, but I got to be honest, there's been a couple of things. You know, we get paid for advertising on the show and I've come around to a couple of things. Oddly, like I'll, I'll advertise something that's good quality and not necessarily wear it, you know, but I do like free shit and I don't really go shopping and I got to be honest with you, you know, Keen's been running these ads on the show and, uh, I've been wearing those fucking Keen, uh, you know, work shoes. They're fucking good. The work sneakers. But they pay for advertising on the podcast. And they sent me, I got a bunch of Keen boots. And like those on sneakers, or those on running sneakers, 
I didn't ask for those. A buddy of mine knows a guy. You know, that was like my buddy was my buddy Keith was like, you know, I know the guy who does the thing. And I'm like, all right, you want me to send you some sneakers? Yeah. They're the best fucking sneakers I ever had. They're, no one's getting paid for that shit. They just happen to be that. Ooh, that's good. And Zevia, I didn't even, I don't even know how that happened. I mean, I drink Zevia. I think the Zevia people have the people out spying. They, there must be, Zevia planted a camera in my house. Oh, wait, I'm holding the one that's planted in my house. And uh, saw that I drank them and then just reached out to me. And they were like, thanks for liking Zevia. And I'm like, yeah, I drink it all the time. I hope it doesn't turn out to be bad for me. You want to send me some Zevia? And that's that. Zevia rhymes with Stevia. Yes, that's that's the angle, my friend. That is the angle. I'm trying to decide whether I should take an easy hike. I fucked my back up, man. I don't even know how I fucked it up. Should we tripod it? What's going on? Too close? Everybody all right? I've been a little... Fu- that show the other night was nuts. Too much phosphorus in the what? Um, what roast do I buy? I buy... A, I, I don't buy anything. I, you know, JustCoffee.coop has been sending me coffee for a decade because they were one of our original sponsors. And um, that's the deal now. I still kind of shout them out occasionally, but I just get a, get a couple, couple bags of coffee a month. So I don't really... I, occasionally I'll, I'll pay for some uh, um, Dunkin' Donuts coffee. This stuff's coming along all right. This thing annoys me. I had a dream about uh, Sarah uh, last night, who uh, hates me. I dreamt she was uh, at some sort of festival or something, and I was there, and she was with the... I was like trying to figure out whether she was dating Pete Holmes or not, (laughs) who I believe is married and with child. No, she didn't talk to me. I, I I was actually looking at her. I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I think the uh... gotta go to band practice this week. I don't know if it's a matter of getting over it. Then. You know, just, there's no reason for us to be in touch, really. But it was kind of weird. All I hope is that you know, she wasn't happy about what happened. That's all I can hope. I know, I know. Hello, Cholo Jesus. Long time, pal. God damn, should I go? Leonard sent me this um, this book, and it's like if the food on the cover looks nasty, and this is an old ass book with some really old ass recipes that are very Jewy that I kind of want to make, but it's kind of nasty. But I like the book. Do the gnarliest hike? I don't know, man. 
my back's fucked. I'm just coming out of it. I gotta do the yogas and the, maybe I'll meditate. But I might go, I might go on the easier hike, but if I don't go soon, you know, you wanna do a yoga class? Uh oh, bicycle is whipping around. Maybe he, what's up bro? God, that guy's ready to go. Um, I never did get into Blue Oyster Cult. Uh, I'm going to make some Sephardic dishes. I don't think these are Sephardic. Most of these look sort of straight up Eastern European. And they're not that complicated. There's a lot of uh, schmaltz involved. And then there's like some of these recipes for like borscht and stuff call for something called Russell, which is sour beet juice. And the recipe is remove greens and tops of beets and wash them thoroughly scrubbing with a stiff vegetable brush. Quarter beets, then place them in an earthenware crock with a tight cover. Cover beets with boiled water that has been cooled to lukewarm. There must be at least two inches of water above the beets. Cover and let it stand in a warm place for about four weeks. With no pickling agent or no nothing. So you're just kind of letting it sour. And then you use that juice for, for uh, borsches. You know, that's sort of an investment there. You know what I mean? Want to do a yoga class? I don't really do yoga. This is what I do in the morning. Sammy, what's going on? What if I start to like, you know, do this? Do this regular. Sam, try to open my back up, man. I don't know how I fucked it up. Sam, do you know how I fucked it up? Sammy. Sam is not the warmest cat in the world. Why do I end up with cats that that are just not that affectionate? Is it me, Sam? Oh, shit. Is it because of my disposition? Is it because that I'm not open enough or something? Am I supposed to be talking through this? All right, so you want, I like to start with a child's pose sometimes to open up the back a little bit. I just did what I call a Chinese person squat. I don't know if that's racially appropriate, but this is to me is the Asian person. Maybe that's better. It's an Asian person in the squat because when I lived in New York and I'd go down to Chinatown, I would see like just circles of people, of Asian people, just hanging out, talking like this. Do you want some attention? Want some attention? All right, so.
then, well, how, much, how far away do I need to be? How far away? I've never done this type of production before. Then I just, this is the old thing I learned from a Jew Buddhist. Just hang, hang over your, hang over your knees for a while. Let the back stretch out. What's going on in there? Did I lock myself out? Oh God. Jesus Christ. Yeah, breathe. You're supposed to breathe, I think. Losing everybody, or are we still having a class? What's happening? I didn't say this is straight up yoga. This is like my mishmash, like the Jew Buddha, the Jew Buddhist guy, the hanging thing. Like, I don't know what the, I don't know what these poses are. Sometimes I do a little of this. Yeah, right, Sammy. This is like this is like old people exercise. It's like a grandma exercise. I call this the grandma. <laughs> um, sometimes I do some of these. My dad used to do these. What do you call these? Yeah, I call this the uh, Charleston. The Charleston stretch. Going back. Yes. This ought to turn some people off. Oh. But are any of these specifically yoga? No, not yet. Then there's this. This one. This is kind of fun. I think it's for the knees. Would that make sense? The Jew Buddhist used to have me do these, but my old man used to do these. Yeah. How's it going? Is it kind of a yoga stretch? Knee circles. Is that what they're called? Is that the official name? The Swalom. Uh, the David Bird. Those are good. You guys are so creative. Hey. So, Is that is that like a sun salutation? So this is this is the the help. This is help me pose into I don't want to live anymore. Into maybe into I don't really want to. Into like okay, I'll step back. Into like oh, all right, I'm just gonna do this now. Into ow. Into yep. Uh, you want to push it out a little bit in yup. And then, and then into like step or jump into, I don't know, I did that one, that was okay. Into like, maybe if you want to look back into help. 
That's how, I think those are the names of the poses. No? So it's, help, I don't want to live anymore. Okay, maybe I do. Not really, but I'll step back and I'll go ahead and do this now. And then like, ow. Oh. And then like, yep. And then step or jump. I haven't been jumping, but maybe I'll jump. Um, right now we're gonna, we're gonna add a couple of poses. Okay. Relax, don't freak out. Ow, my back is fucked. I gotta fill up the hummingbird water. Look at this deep shot. do two more of these. I gotta add something. So, oh, help me. I don't want to live anymore. Okay, maybe I do. What about this one? I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. All right, I'm back down. Okay, maybe I want to live. Nope. Let's do this one now. Okay, back to this. Oh, ow. And then like, over here. And then we're gonna be like, Oh, that one. Yes. A little of this. Look, I can fly. No, I can't. Go back in this. Step. A little different though this time. This, 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 this. Let's do this. Yes. This is the look what I'm doing, pose. Into the like, oh, surfing. Uh, how's it going? Now I don't know if this is a pose, but I do it. I think it's Warrior Nine. And back down. Into this. To the other side. This is, I think, Warrior One. Warrior Two. Warrior Three. And whatever this one is. Oh. What do you think? Um, so now we gotta do one more, man. Cartwheel to plank. Yeah, right? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do that full one, but now on the breath. All right, which means it's faster. Hi, Sam. Fucking cats, man. I understand Buster, but like Sammy, like, I don't know. 
And it's important when you're a dude to always sort of pull at your uh, pants there so everything uh, levels out appropriately. All right, so now we do the whole thing a little quicker. On the breath. Pretty well yoga there. Everybody feel feel the heat. Everyone feel the heat in their core. Sammy, you feel the heat in your core. Why not? Yeah, I'm going hiking. This is a pre-hike thing. I should probably roll out my back. It's always important to have, when you're doing yoga, it's always important to have coffee. What happened? I'm over here. I'm over here, bro. It's always important to have coffee for in between. There's nothing better when you're hot and sweaty than coffee. Right, Sam? Are you even looking at me? This is an okay back rower from Lululemon. Again, they have not given me anything and they've taken a lot of my money. But I don't know how I hurt my lower back with the rower. Ugh. Roll out your butt on both sides. I'm not a professional and I'm self-taught. I'm, self I'm a self-taught back rower. So that's pretty impressive. Full on autodidact back rower. I'm not making you guys stay here. Oh, I don't even know why I'm doing this in front of you. I guess it was all that was left. That and showering. Whoa. I tried to get Jerry to hike with me, but I don't know. I don't think he. Shit, man. Oh. Watch this. What is that thing? Huh? Look at that. That's her like. A little more specific and irritating. Oh, God damn it. Whoa. 
hey, old man, what are you doing? I hate when that happens, when my shirt rolls up in the back row. same water bottles and they're kind of fucking thermoses. Be careful not to hurt your ass hole. Okay. I did get into an argument with Burr. But it got heated so we didn't we it didn't really flesh out. You know him and I are kind of zero to a hundred guys. And it wasn't like a personal argument. This is the longest I've ever done this. I think I'm doing it for your benefit. <laughs> it's almost like fucking, it's fucking ass rolling porn. All right. I got into an argument with her, but like I can't take these fucking idiots with them. Like he got vaxxed, but he's like, yeah, I don't know, man. There's no reason to trust the government with the vaccine. It's like, what's the government have to do with anything? Wait, like this idea, like, yeah, the government is you know, putting shit in the vaccine, so what, we all die? We, what, they, you know, we'll just start from scratch? There's no logic to this sort of government conspiracy around vaccination. No logic at all. And, but, like, pharmaceutical companies, uh, yeah, sometimes they do bad shit, sometimes they do really good shit. The same companies that, like, you know, do the bad shit that you think is bad also save lives. The same companies that do the thing that you're questioning make cancer medication. I mean, it's like... Just shut up and get a shot. He's vaxxed, but it was just this idea that even though he was vaxxed, he was like, but I don't know, man, you can't trust the government. I'm like, what the what does the government have to do with it? So there you go. Yeah, all they want to do is like, they want, like, like this government is even that organized or smart. It's amazing that, you know, Biden pulled enough together for us to get the goddamn things. Oh, yeah, Bill Burr, yeah. That was the funniest thing. <laughs> Him and I are, you know, we're, we're good. He's just like, he's a guarded guy. I'm a guarded guy in my way. He gets worked up. He's very hard to argue with. He's, he likes to keep talking. No, but the party thing was, um, uh, he was like not eating nothing. He was like doing this. He's like a food nut like me, but he was no carbonate. And I was, you know, carbon heavy, I think. And we were at this party, you know, just like, uh, he's like eating good. Like he's not, no bread. Just, I could see the plates, you know, that look in someone's eyes where they're, they're not really happy about what they're doing, but they got to do. They got to stick to it. So it's not a happy face at the party, while they're they're eating their, uh, while they're honoring their diet. And I just kept checking over at him, and then eventually I saw him hit the desserts, and he was like walking with you know with the whole fucking plate of of good stuff, and I'm like, there it is. <laughs> and he just couldn't believe like I was just waiting for him to fucking buckle. Did I break a piece of my tooth? No, it's been like that. There's been caps on it, on and off. And then they fall off. It's been broken for a while. And I think this tooth is dying. I need to, uh, um, I need to get a new dentist because mine retired during COVID and I shouldn't put that off because it's going to get painful.
There it is. I don't know when I broke it. I don't know how I broke it. Bird works out. Bird, like, he does a lot of pull-ups. He's like a, you know, he's... He was, like, I, I remember... I went to his old house once. And he had a whole setup. He had that one of those things where, you know, one of those, like, giant wooden boards with the pegs. You know, I mean, he's... He's on it. My teeth are not white. I go to the dentist. I used to go once or twice a year, but I need to get a new one. There's nothing but dentists around here. And everybody's like, I got a good dentist. I go, yeah, I, yeah but just, I just need a dentist, yeah. Um... Do I use conditioner on my hair? Yeah. You're dying to know who the special guest is at the store. Sometimes it's not a special guest and it's not a problem to go, you know, they usually don't bump me, but sometimes it's not. It's just somebody who doesn't want to put their name on the schedule for reasons that aren't even celebrity based. Some people have stalker problems. Uh, some women comics. It's sad, but it's true. So they don't want to be promoted. There's a couple of them. I mean, a week or so ago, the special guest, the poppin' was Saget, and I had to bring him on. And I was like, Saget? Saget gets poppin' status? Saget. All right. Oh, fucking busted his balls relentlessly. Oh, I added a, um, how's the Avalon? I like the Avalon. I added a, a date in Phoenix. I was doing a Thursday, just a one-off, but then it, I guess it sold out quickly. And so they added a Friday show, an early Friday show in Phoenix, whenever the fuck that is. I'm, what is it? Is it August 13th? Somebody check, will you? I don't know, they're Phoenix people. Um, I believe I'm going to be on Segura's podcast tomorrow. I think they're posting it. Hope that doesn't cause trouble. Yeah. Among the bros. Hope it doesn't ripple through the monoculture of free thinkers. Yeah, I love the Avalon. I mean, I'm not like, I can't buy a nice car because I fuck cars up. So that's like the top of the line with the Toyota. It's not cheap, but it's not a fucking Lexus either. It's like the nicest Toyota. And I never see him around. And fucking Madrigal makes fun of me. Um, yeah, two bears, one cave. Uh, I'm filling in for Bird, I guess. Madrigal says it's for Asian ladies. The, um, uh, Avalon, but I don't know if that's true. That's coming from a guy who like went out of his way to you know pay, you know, to buy a, a Toyota Jeep from the seventies or eighties. Like it's such an off the kind of like that's the collectible. Like whatever. Yeah, that sounds about right. Would I ever have Boyd Rice on? I don't know. I think I haven't, I haven't heard that name in a long time. I don't know if it's an old lady car. It doesn't look like an old lady car. And it drives really well. No such thing as a Toyota Jeep. There isn't. Do I ever go see other comics when I'm not at the store? Not usually. I've had many Camrys. The old Camrys, like the 95s, those are the good ones. When they were just starting to make them, I think, at Lexus. And I'm just speculating. Did I buy any record store releases today? No. 
Somebody sent me the soundtrack for There Will Be Blood. That was very nice. I've not, I don't know much about Courtney Barnett. Okay, a Jeep is a Jeep. You know what I'm saying, though. Flea's been on um, with Robert Trujillo. My first car was a Datsun. My second car was a Toyota. Do I believe in astral projection and lucid dreaming? I don't know if I believe in astral projection, but a lot of times in waking consciousness, I'm sort of making plans and trying to figure out how to navigate an entirely different life I'm living. And it's very detailed and very real. That's a little wild. I don't believe in, you know, parallel whatever, whatever, that, you know, right now I'm living 90 different lives as me. But sometimes in that waking consciousness, um, there's sort of like, you know, like it's like I'm thinking about things to do, you know, and places I got to go in an entirely different life. You got to be 210. Time is at 10 o'clock. Somebody bought me a, um, how long does this go on for? Somebody bought me um, a, a thing to stick on my windshield to put the phone on. Am I your grandpa? I don't think so. I'm, I guess I could be. Am I a shopaholic? No, not really. I do tend to like impulsively buy things off of Amazon, but it's not like anything exciting. It's like a belt for my turntable, you know, a money clip for a gift for somebody. I bought a a, a brush for you know brushing food. I have met Hannah Gatsby. Do I like meatloaf? Jesus, I haven't had a meatloaf in a million years. You want that mystery house? You and me both. I've not seen staged on Hulu. Who's on the pod on Monday? That's a good question. Um, who is on there? Hold on. I can look. Hold on. Um, Rick Rubin is on the podcast on Monday. I don't brush the cats, no. I don't know when I was able to grow a full mustache. I was excited about it, though. I don't feel like... It wasn't, like, early on. I wasn't, like, one of those sort of high school hairy guys. One of a kind. What about an episode with the cats? I do that all the time, Glassman. I've I've definitely done episodes that are very cat heavy. I'm sorry I don't have a friend who, you know, can animate poop and stuff you know, to make it, you know, compelling to the child in all of us. Um, But I have done episodes that are very cat heavy. But I guess if I had a cartoon guy and I could, you know, make the cats sit still while I go, um, it would be a different podcast. But I'm not, I'm I'm not, I'm more lo-fi than that. Low tech dude. Just an iPhone and me winging it. So... Rick Rubin was not, he's not easy. And like, you know, he's one of those guys where it's like, there's a thousand things and you can't kind of get onto it. But, you know, he did get very excited. The high point, I don't do just animations of poop. We animate serious stuff too. Hey man, I'm sure you're at the cutting edge of sort of deeply emotional. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you're taking on things like, you know, politics, you know, cancer, the environment with the uh, cartoons. I, I'm not, I'm just saying I don't have the technology. And I know you're probably going to take this seriously because of your problem. 
but I'm 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 being serious, but I'm also being very funny right now. Rick. Um, the high point of the Rick Rubin uh, interview is, and you should look for it, uh, is um, when he starts talking about wrestling. I do not live near a golf course. Maybe I do. I don't know. Yes, I know, Rick. I know. I'm not, I'm not, I think your podcast is great and I'm happy it's uh, successful for you. And, um, you know, and I, I'm proud of you and you're doing great stuff and you seem to have a fun family and you're taking on all of the big issues. Very serious. Rick Rubin is a wrestling fan, not not just a wrestling fan, like an all in wrestling nerd dude. Um, any new info on the Lynn Shelton painting? Yes, it's not my Lynn Shelton, and we you know we kind of hit a dead end with the. You're laughing out loud. Well, good, Rick. I'm excited that my tone finally translated into something funny for you. <laughs> when are you going to come out and do some comedy, Rick? What's the last book you read? I'm reading that Robert Johnson book. The last book I finished was that Danny Trejo book. And I just got sent a book about the making of Goodfellas. That's a great sentence. I am invite to Islam. You are invite to Islam? Is it happening? You want to open for me, Rick? Only if you bring the suitcase of garbage. If you bring the suitcase full of garbage that you hold up and the puppet. I don't know if I can follow you in the puppet. You know, I don't need to, you know, I don't need more stress uh, than I already have when I perform. So I don't know if I can follow this sort of like, um, kind of like shopping channel puppet thing that you do. So I don't know if you'd be a good opener for me. Puppets are hard to follow, generally speaking. Um, does the store only make money from door and drinks? Yeah, I believe so. The store only makes money from door and drinks. Yeah, I know that whatever that comment, you know, why don't they do a thing where they charge for this or that? We're trying to do comedy. We're trying to work out. The store, in its essence, was created as a workshop for comedians. And then the main room was added to do professional shows. Like, you know, not everything has to be pushed to the max so everybody can be involved and you create more infrastructure and more problems and releases and paying things. The store does fine. And right now it's in its purest fucking form. It's just comics, many of whom... Uh, are not big name comics working out their shit and being very funny in a sort of egalitarian kind of nice way. You know, obviously there are big stars there that come and go, but there's the vibe there is definitely leveled off. People who are on the you know periphery are now sort of in the fold and comfortable. It's not some sort of like you know um, dick swinging shit show over there, and there's a balance to it. It's been very pleasant. Peace Coffee. I never worked with Peace Coffee. Why not a TV show of the X? Because we want to work out. We don't always want to be on fucking TV. You got to fucking build material. It's a place to sort of work out. You want to see a TV show with comics? Go watch the ones that exist. The comedy store doesn't need to fucking do that. Mitzi tried doing that a million years ago. Hey, Kelly. How's it going? Hanging in there. How are you? Good. You back at work? How is it? 
You're going back to Florida? Okay. Well, it's good to see you. Wow, it's crazy. It's like this idea. It's like, come on, man. Everybody's got to like, you know, who's winning? Got to make more money. We need to see everything all the time. It's like, get a fucking life. Says the guy who's on his porch talking to strangers on his phone for an hour plus. Do you feel safe enough in regard to the variant? And I don't know, man. Like, I, look, if I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. You know what I mean? It's like I have to believe that my double shot of Moderna is going to hold. And that, I, I guess the concern is getting it with being vaccinated and not knowing you have it and spreading it. But I don't know. I know a guy who got it and he had the Johnson and Johnson. He didn't get that sick. Uh, so I'm not freaking out. I have other things to be afraid of. Um, COVID's not one of them right now. I, I'm not saying you're not regulars and I know some of you, but you know what I'm saying. Just relax. Don't take it so fucking personally. I didn't mean to insult the crew, girlfriends on the couch. I didn't mean to... Fuck it, I'm going to get a drink. Enjoy. It's 10 in the morning here, wherever time it is for you. If that's the time to... What else am I afraid of, Rick? What am I... Oh, what else am I afraid of, Rick Glassman? I don't know, you know, like... I seem to be afraid of, there's some sort of weird insecurity going on around, like whether I think it's necessary to keep entertaining and like, because like if I do anything, like these shows I'm doing at Dynasty, they have to be important to me. I have to feel like I'm moving through something or that it has to not, it doesn't have to be life or death, but it has to be important to me. You know, I'm not, I can't casually, you know, just, you know, I can't just go up there with a puppet, though I am, and I'm not being mean to you, I am kind of my own puppet, aren't we all? But, so there's a little fear about, you know, um, embarrassing myself. I'm a little afraid of, you know, I, I've been going over my past lately in a weird way. Just all the embarrassing things it took to get me here. I, you know, I guess I, I'm not daily, I'm not on the daily afraid of dying, but I'm a little concerned that you know, my life is sort of going to level off and I'm not going to, you know, know how to um, be in a relationship again, you know, and I'm also a little afraid that, you know, I'm getting a little, like, too honest and mean again. Like, I have to reel that shit in. But, you know, it's just the basic stuff. Disease and death, but not COVID. Right now. I've heard about the Bourdain Act. I, I hear they, the Bourdain doc, I hear they hung a lot on Argento, on Asia. They like, you know, it's like, and that sounds a little, a little bit much, you know. People usually kill themselves because they, you know, they're mentally ill, they've had enough and they want to kill themselves. It's really hard to start hanging blame on people. It's still a, a profound choice on behalf of the chooser. Oh, believe me, I have settled for imperfection. Do I want to take a kindness class with me? Hey, go fuck yourself. I'm sorry, maybe I need it. Again, that was a joke, Rick. I don't know if you process it that way. Um, I, I'm okay. I can be kind. I just have to be attentive. I'm, I'm not. I'm not unkind. It's just sometimes I, I don't pause and and do it. Like like last night is a good example. Funches is the sweetest guy in the world to the point where you're sort of like, come on, dude, reel it in. And um, you know he kind of busted my balls a little on stage. I I busted his balls a little, bit. but like he had. Well, that's not that. That was okay because he's in 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 inside all of that insane kindness is a a well guarded you know very funny um, nerd uh, who you know can handle himself. 
uh, the, um, but I remember he showed me his sneakers, you know, that his, his, his you know, like name sneakers that Puma made for him. And I didn't show the proper level of excitement. And he said it hurt his feelings. And I understand that. Uh, but I don't give a fuck about sneakers. So I had to sort of back up and go like, well, I'm, I'm happy that you got your sneakers. You see, like, it's a matter of, uh, you know. Yeah. There is a part of me that lives in the public sphere, especially the comedy sphere. That is a little uh, bit much. So I don't know if I need a kindness class. Yeah, Funches has his own sneakers. Yes, other people's sensitivity, that's right. Well, you kind of need that because, Rick, and I don't want to, you know, um, diagnose you, but um, it feels to me that you kind of need to, because you're, you're, you, don't, you perceive everything at a certain frequency and that frequency doesn't alter much. So if you're not picking up signs that would require you to be more sensitive, um, you you aren't, I imagine. So I, I could understand why you would need it. But me, I'm I'm fucking I'm the sweetest guy in the world. Any new records? Yeah. I need wait a minute. I need a class where you pretend to be more interested in things that you don't necessarily interest you. Um do you know how many interviews I've done? I'm I'm pretty good at that. Have you heard my ad reads? I can do that. Are we okay, Rick? Do we need to? Do I need to bring you in? How do I do that? Like this. See if Rick comes in. Hi, buddy. Are Hi. You okay? Look who I have. Yeah. Are you now? Let's just go be straight. Are you stoned right now? No. Okay. So what's going on? <laughs> um. Well, that's so leading. Like, like there was an issue. Not. I was just watching and, and enjoying you, and and uh. I, I'm crossing the left, like, sometimes you make jokes like I'm this robot that doesn't understand things. And I go, that's ridiculous. But then you say I'm joking and I go, oh, I guess I didn't know that one. <laughs> I don't think you're a robot. You know, we know, we know what's up with you. We've discussed it thoroughly. Yeah. How, what's going on? Are you doing stand up or no? What are we on the podcast? Yeah. Uh, no, I've done, I've done three shows since March of last year. Do you not want to do it anymore? I very much. I think I, I got. I'm I'm, home, I'm in my hometown in in Ohio at the moment, and I got You're in my Ohio. How's it? How is it? Whose cat is that? Your family's? Yeah, but we. I got him. My girlfriend oh. and I got him. But yes, um, it's it's good. I love being here. It's very green. But I got my second shot while I was here, so I've been just now. What the fuck were you waiting for? I was waiting for my show to end, and then I, I got the first shot, and I was scared to get the second one for if we could get into it. But I have my own fears, and I'm like, I'm more scared to not get it. Right. So I got it, and now I'm, I now I'm like, okay, I'm ready, but I'm in Ohio. Right. So when you start performing again, is it? Have you thought about adding new stuff to the suitcase? Or you've seen me do one set, <laughs> okay, a silly set because I'm a silly guy, Mark. But I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very, I'm sophisticated. I, I know, just, I, I, I just, know. I just color it. You know what? You and I are a very similar painting, but you refuse to color yours in. You're just this lo-fi black and white. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. And I am the same thing, but with a clown hat and a puppet. 
dude, I'm doing silly jokes now. It's my new thing. I do a few silly jokes right up front. Like, yeah. for instance, this is my new opener lately. I say, my cats are acting weird. Uh, I think there's going to be an economic collapse. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's funny. That's like, that's like a cute joke. Hi, how's it going? I'm fine. You? Oh, nice to see you. The kitten's good. It's like a cat now. Yeah. Where do you guys live? Around the corner? Oh, okay. Well, it's nice seeing you again. Yeah, we, uh, we actually know Carol, who was the costume designer on the show that Lynn was doing in Boston. Oh, the Kevin can go fuck himself? Yeah. Uh, she yeah, they did a nice tribute. They, put a, they made hey. a street named after her. Yeah, sure. I'm on live with Mark Marin. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, it's nice <laughs> to see you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks. No, she was pretty, but I'm... All right. I'll be talking a little bit. Um, Mark... Yeah. I have a question for you. Okay. Um, are you friends with Dave Attell? Yeah. Are you good friends? As good as comics can be for the most part. You know, he's not like the most sociable. It's not like we, we, we hang out and go swimming together. But yeah, I've known him for a lot of... A oh, lot. No. <laughs> what? I said, so no, you're not. No, no. I, I consider him like... A, like it, we, have, we started at the same time. I've known him forever. We've had great moments. He's been helpful. I... I, I it's just like we're all sort of, I don't hang out with many people. So a friend, there's different tiers, but I consider Dave a good friend, even though I don't talk to him. Why? Well, he's playing hilarities this weekend and I have all my podcast equipment with me. What chance do I have of you seeing if he'd be interested in being a guest on my podcast? Oh my God, I don't know. I understand. It's a tough game. Well, it's not just a matter of game. Like, you, you know, I, he's a very kind of like insulated guy. You know what I mean? It's not, he might do it. I mean, he's so funny, you know, it, it, it's just, you'd have a better chance at it. If you, are you going to the show? No. Oh, have you ever watched him? Yeah. It's great. You should go to the show and he's, ask him. Huh? I'm not going to go. And also if I, I mean, I'm not going to go to the show. Why? I, I mean, I, I guess the, the most simple answer is I just, I don't want, I mean, I think he's so, so funny and I would watch it if it was on TV. I don't want to go there. I'm still not loving being around people. Oh, oh okay. You know, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to. I okay. do, I am a legitimate fan of his though. And I think that I would have a great interview with him and he would enjoy he, it he, if he did it. He is one of the most solid comics that ever lived. Greatest joke writer in the world. And, and like, he's one of those guys where it's all jokes, but, you know, his personality is so fucking dug in. It's like Rodney, you know, he's the best. I and just always watched. Always new jokes. Always new jokes. I just watched uh, every uh, Rodney Carson interview I could find. I mean, I've, I've seen them many times, but. That, I, you know, that one where he taught, when he's, he says, is that Mike uh, turned on funny or whatever you remember when the mic he kind of asked if the mic was on or something that he, he says that he's done that's like a joke he does that yes he does that a lot i don't know if there's a particular one yeah but i found it interesting because the way i remembered it because i'd seen him years ago i thought there was two versions of it i mean two he did it many times but he would do one of the two versions he would either do stand up and then go to the couch or he would sit on the couch to do stand up like yeah. he would do his well, set from the couch do. What's that? That's what I mean. I, you know, I set out to do that on Conan. Sit, sit, sit down and stand up. The, the only thing that it affords you when you do panel is you can be a little looser. Mm -hmm. Like he never was. But like after I did two Conans, all the rest of my Conan appearances were, were a panel because that's what I wanted. I wanted to be like Richard Lewis on David Letterman. But you produce them the same way. Like you get on the phone with a segment producer usually and they're like, what do you got? What stories, what bits? And my bits were conversational. So it was always better. And the benefit of doing couch was it didn't, you know, you didn't have to have a finished thing. I mean, you could have one that was half funny and, you know, kind of move through it as a conversation and then finish a joke later. So much of the shit I'd done Conan became better jokes as time went on. Did sometimes feel more organic to, even though you're doing prepared stuff, it felt like Conan was setting you up versus it felt like a conversation where you had the answers ready. Does that well, make sense? It, it's gotten more conversational with certain hosts, but like some people are better at setting up than others. And usually you want to just, you know, go at it. 
you just you know you, you know you want them basically what you want them to do is save you if it's fucking sagging more than set you up you know yeah what's the setup really so uh, i heard you got a haircut oh yeah you know every time i go to get my haircut they always want to gossip and listen i love gossip but sometimes hey i just want to get my hair cut conan yeah 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 that's good you should maybe if he gets another show you could you could ask him if you could do the haircut bit on the well, couch. I was hoping I could send him a, the interview with a tell as a proof of concept. <laughs> Good luck. It would be kind of difficult to uh, for me to do that. It would be odd. But you know, yeah. Louis Katz is really funny. Yeah, I could, I, you could probably get Louis Katz. Uh, this is I, I, this is a situation where I know I'm supposed to pretend, but I I, I don't I don't know the name. I don't know who that is. He opens for a tell. He's been opening for a tell forever. And you would definitely oh. relate to him. He's a dirty what? Jewish boy. He's a really funny guy. What? Doesn't matter. What, you're going to say you're not Jewish? Or you're not Jewy? Or why do I identify as Jew? And why do I always hang that on you? Look at you. Look at you, Jew. What, what's the problem, Rick? Rick I wasn't, off I wasn't Rick offended Glassman. by the Jew. I was offended by the opener. <laughs> I was offended that I'm the opener. Yes. So... What was your fear of me uh, of me opening for you? Is it that I'm um, I'm too weird that it would turn the show? No. No, it's not. It's it's not that. It's just like you know. It's it's better for me. It doesn't matter. I mean, you could open for me. You, maybe if I do a show, uh, we can try it. But you know, you know, get your chops back. Get your twenty back. I don't want to be backstage in, with you sitting there, you know, with the puppet at you know twenty eight and getting off, going like I was doing so well. I didn't I didn't realize how much time I'd done. Like I don't need that. I don't need to be backstage getting aggravated about a fucking puppet killing, you know, when I'm supposed to be on stage, right? Wait, so I don't. I, wait, I'm not understanding. Are you saying I need to get my chops back specifically so I know not to run the light? That's part of it, but also just to make sure you're funny, just to make sure the act's tight. I want you to be funny as possible, and you know to have the act in place. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. you're rusty, dude. You're rusty. There's no way. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I didn't. Yeah. So once I have a 20 minutes, and I don't feel rusty anymore. So yeah, let's think. You know, 2023. 2023. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say quarter two, 2023. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. When I'm going to look exactly like you. <laughs> exactly. I look like your family. Yeah, I've seen the comments. A lot of people are saying that it looks like Mark's talking to his older self. <laughs> uh, you would have been a lot less tolerable. What do you mean? Oh, when you if you were my older self, you would have been, you know, angry and sweaty and, you know, defensive and, you know. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. yeah um, have you have you have you gotten more uh have you gotten uh better more tolerable as you've gotten older or have you just gotten nicer no I've, I've gotten more comfortable with myself i think and that sort of bleeds out you know a little bit and i'm a little more I've, I've, I've definitely been humbled and that has an effect on uh aggravated people swaggering around what you humbles know, age, you age and and uh, and emotional pain and tragedy tends to uh, to humble you a bit it gets a, a little harder to to walk around full steam like, uh, everything's okay. So you just kind of surrender to, uh, like, yeah, look at me. I'm a little crumpled. Like, I've gotten a little crumpled, Rick. Mm -hmm. A little crumpled. Is that same? Yeah. How do you get humbled? Um, what's the difference between, well, I don't know, I mean, 20 years ago, you versus today, you? Is it career well, stuff? Always, the, the difference was I always thought, like, I was ready. Like, it's like, why the fuck am I not doing this? How come I'm not? And the truth is, I had no idea who I was, you know, I was sort of just, uh, you know, kind of running on anger fuel and, you know, and, and also working hard and persistence and being, you know, a certain type of comic. But I don't know that I really had uh, a, a grounded personality because I was sort of avoiding it. And then once I, I kind of got a little crumpled and, you know, I was more comfortable with myself, it made a big difference. And I also started to truly love comedy, whereas I was just pretending. I just, I, I had to do it before now i like to do it but there was about 20 25 years where i'm like this is what i do i gotta keep pushing and you know and then all of a sudden i was like hey wait i'm good at this and i like it and this is i live up here but it took a long time 
I'm bummed that my. Would my you pay attention to any of that? Or where no, I was. I was. Oh yeah, no, I don't want to make a joke because I don't know if you think robots only do that too. So yes, I hear it all. I still don't quite understand what crumpled mean. At first, I thought you just meant like, you know, I don't. I just. But but the way you used it there, it may have seemed like a specific thing that happened. I mean, it's a metaphor. I'm sorry that poetry is lost on you. I I just mean that like I've gotten older. I'm a little more. What? I don't like that stuff. Poetry's not lost on me, dude. I'm poetry's not like well okay well let's explore crumpled as a metaphor when you crumple like let's maybe we can maybe like look so no I understand say, let's say this is me let's say this I'm, is me I'm, right and my hands and my hands are light and then you go okay okay how you feeling talk about that yeah but mark mark what 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 your what were your hands life that's what I'm looking for life Life, Look, this age, isn't poetry. Time, this, this isn't events. poetry. This is algebra. You need to give me these variables. What changes? Because life, everyone has. Everyone does that mean everyone gets crumbled, or are you a particular? Because not everybody gets humbled. Crump that, no, that's right. Some people remain delusional and and unself aware their entire life. I imagine you have some in your family. It's a fairly common trait with Jews. So you. You're just kind of plowing forth selfishly thinking people remain interested in you as opposed to going like, who am I? Where am I at? How am I really feeling? So everyone is crumpled, but not everyone is humbled from a crumple. Exactly. Not everyone is humbled from a crumple. <laughs> yeah, you're next There's to some a cocky crumpled going on. Humbled from crumple? Mark yeah. Maron? Yeah, that's the, new, that's the title of the children's book. Before I forget, uh, everybody in here. The puppet show. Humble uh, from Crumple. Hold on, Mark. I'll take the stage for a sec. Could okay. everyone here please uh, comment on and DM Dave Attell saying one of my favorite comedians, or you could say top five, is in Cleveland. You should do his podcast. Yeah, okay. You can do that on my feed. All right. Well, I, yeah. Right. Now, now you got to go. Now it's when now we're done. Enjoy okay. Ohio. Thanks, Mark. All right, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. That was uh, Rick Glassman, ladies and gentlemen. What a show. What a big show. Did you see I met people? Let's go see that. What's going on in here? Is everybody in their place? Where's, where's uh, Buster? Why is everything so low key now? Buster? Buster? Is he in the den? What's up, buddy? Come here. Let's hang out a little bit. Let's have some quality time. It's your show now. Glassman's gone. Come here, Buster. What's up, bud? What's up, buddy? Huh? How are you? You okay? Yeah? What's going on? It's nice to see you. Buster. Booster. Hey, buddy. Uh-oh, here comes stupid. Jealous. Come on. a boy. Buster. Booster. What's up, buddy? What's up? Oh, a little flop for you. There you go. Hi, pal. Hi, pal. Where's Dummy? I hear him. That's it, Buster. That's it, Buster. Buster. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Uh-oh. <laughs> what? I didn't do it. Is this stupid? Hey, come here. Show everybody your huge balls. Come on, Sammy. Come on, Sammy. Let's see the huge balls. You want? Come on. Show everybody the huge balls. Look at Sam. You want to see Sammy's huge balls? Look at that. Big balls. I'm going to take them off, Sam.
right, let's, uh, I guess, what, what happened to the hike situation? Somebody sent me. This. I'm not sure if I have the, oh, maybe this is it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know if they're even on. All right. I will kick a record. You know what I found out from Rick Rubin? Which was uh, validating, but also made me realize I'm, you know, out of my price range. Um, we have the same speakers. I just bought the same speakers Rick Rubin has, which means um, they're really good. And uh, I'm acting above my pay grade. <laughs> that's, that's what that means. Well, who does? Who the hell's the judge on that, right? I don't know what this is. This was just sent to me from, uh, I like this company. Does anybody know Eric Slick? I think we can play this without getting busted. It's from that company, Org, Org Music. What speakers are they? They're Sabrina X's. They're Wilson Sabrina X's. I feel like I should know these guys. Those Brit speakers I had were too refined. I don't know. They weren't really. They worked with some, you know, with some styluses. These are definitely refined, but they separate things, and there's a lot more mid-range. They weren't. It wasn't an issue of them being refined. It was they were too, a little rigid, and the the tweeters were a bit much. But uh, I liked uh, the sound of those things. But these are different. He's in Dr. Dog. Uh, no, I don't give a shit about John Mayer's record. That fucking just bores the fuck out of me. Whoa. Wow. Let's see what we got. Whoa. not uh, my jam i get it but like not right now you know what i mean it's like it, yeah it's sort of john marish that was almost like that is the same spectrum of the reason that i don't like john Mayer. uh this guy elon nouvelle records elon mailer look at this this album is just called Piano Noir. What do you make? What do you think? Try it. Let's try it. Piano Noir. 
How's that going to be? Nouvelle Records again, dude. This is some of the best produced shit out there. N-E-W-V-E-L-L-E. -E -E. Piano Noir. Let's see what happens. All right? Oh. Oh, it's already good. fucking get it out get it going let's get it going let's get it going last one i'll save it i'll save it jesus christ you're like a you're like a fungus you just take over you just take over glassman you're extending your tendrils let's see uh no this guy came to my show the other night peter condheim from negative land he was at thursday oh this is a great record Let's do this. Oh, the Willie Dunn record. Yeah, these were upstairs. Some of you may recognize these from upstairs. Tom Rhodes put out a record. Modi Mokhtar. This is not good to play on the good stereo. It doesn't matter. This is good. But we can't do that. What was... Um, I think we can do... Let's do this. Let's do this. The Canton Spirituals. This ought to do it. This ought to do it. Mark, you're not treating your records like you give a fuck. I know. Should we clean the stylus? This ought to do it. I know we did it already, but I want to get going. Whoa, 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 dude, 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 what is going on? Fuck. Come on, Sam. Wow. Hey, hey, Sam, 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 Sam. Nope. Come on. God damn it. 
College base has been replaced. Someone from the feed here, somebody from Instagram, found me uh, some strange little antique shop where they actually had the exact same vase and in, in a flurry of sort of like closure uh, craving, I, uh, I bought it. So it's back in its place, but it's actually a nicer one than the one I had. This is a plane of six. Okay, you got. What's happening, Sam? What are you doing? What are you doing? Sam, what are you doing? Sam. Ready? Bring it back, bring it back. Sam, Sam, bring it. Hi, Buster. All right. All right, I'll see you later. Go to face. <laughs> 